What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Full Throttle Auto. My name is Harris and today we're finally actually going to be doing an oil catch can on the 9th Gen Accord. I was requesting this video a while back and to be honest, I should have done it way sooner. Uh, let's get into this. Alright, so you might be asking yourself, well, why would I need a oil catch can on a 9th gen Accord, uh, isn't it only for turbos? And there is this misconception that it's only for turbos, or if you, you know, if you have a boosted car, you should have an oil catch can. That is not the case, uh, especially with, uh, if you have the K series or the four cylinder 9th gen Accord, it's especially for that one. I'm not sure if the six cylinders are direct injected, but that's why it's, as that's why it's especially, or it's specific to the 9th gen four cylinder car because it is direct injected. So normally on a, what is it, port injected fuel, uh, fueling system where, where fuel injectors will go through the intake manifold and go past the valves to make that um, gasoline come through the engine to make the, basically to provide power, to provide that combustion. Normally that fuel will help clean out the valves. Now in direct injected cars, that doesn't happen. It goes straight to the cylinder. Uh, the fuel does and so because of that you don't have that fuel that might have additives in it to help clean out the valves of the engine now why would that matter well if the valves get too gunked up they could start creating issues where the engine is just not running properly one of the biggest ones that people notice is misfires in the engine of course there is something to be said about you know um using good oil and doing your uh, maintenance, your oil changes as you should, uh, doing them even probably a little better than what it is recommended by the manufacturer, but that will only go so far. You still will build up that gunk. So that's why you get an oil catch can because that's supposed to help alleviate that buildup on the valves by catching the oil in the catch can instead of having it circulate back into the engine like it normally does on a lot of cars. Okay, so that's my shitty explanation on uh, catch cans and how some things work with direct injection and stuff like that. Now here, let's look at the catch can. So I have a um, Mishimoto here, universal compact baffle two port uh, catch can. I picked this up from MA Performance, I believe it's, it's, I always want to say MAP Performance, but I think it's MA Performance. And I opened, uh, I purchased it as an open box and originally it was supposed to have everything. That's what their description said. And uh, it didn't, it didn't have the fittings. So I contacted them and they hooked me up. Their customer service was really good. So I got to give them props for that. And no, this isn't sponsored. It was just, they really did have good customer service. Uh, and so they finally did get me the, fittings that I needed for this catch can to work on that car. Now, now as for the difference in uh, catch cans, you can really pick up anything. I mean, Mishimoto's one brand, then you have, uh, you know, you have universal ones you're gonna find on probably eBay or even Amazon. And then you have other companies as well to make these. So it's, it's you don't have to go with a Mishimoto. Now, with uh, this particular one, like I mentioned, it is baffled. So in here, when you look, you're gonna have a few additional components that allow the oil to basically not go back up the uh, chamber where it's coming through. So it's supposed to help prevent that with the baffling. Now this particular catch can, as you can see, it does have two ports and then it has the drain here at the bottom. And uh, it has the O-ring here around this main part for the can itself or the canister. Because this was a used catch can. Oh, and just real quick before we get into that. And you might see other catch cans where they have a, a third port that's up here. Now for our cars, we're only going to need two ports. I'm not a hundred percent sure with the third port. Uh, I'm always confused on why you would need the third port for. I know that some cars um, use the third port for ventilation. Uh, and then there are some cars that have multiple ports that would uh, connect to here and then one out. Uh, so there is that I, I'm not 100% certain. I don't know all the technical stuff about it, but you will see that. But for this car, for the ninth gen, you're gonna wanna go with this. Now, going back to this being a open box product, I do recommend buying a new because I'm not sure if the O-rings for the fittings were supposed to originally come with the ones that would have been in the box. Like I mentioned, you do have the O-ring here for the canister, but 
when you look at the fitting, you do not. There is no O-ring. So now I could, you know, try to find an O-ring that fits on this, which, you know, you could do yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do thread sealer. So let's go ahead and get into getting this set up for being installed in the car. Now, as I mentioned, since we don't have any O-rings here, and actually we don't have an O-ring on this other part, uh, we're just going to use some thread sealant. Uh, I have a Permatex here. I'm sure there's other companies that make it. You can use Teflon tape, but a lot of people just use the thread sealer or sealant uh, instead. It's really up to you. I don't think there's any one wrong way or best case scenario, you get the O-rings because you didn't buy used or you didn't buy an open box and it is supposed to have the O-rings with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these and I'm going to go ahead and apply the thread sealer. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never used thread sealant. Um, I haven't used Teflon tape in a long time, but that was my go to. Uh, I always went with Teflon tape, but I'm going to say applying is fairly straightforward, I would assume. I don't know. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll wipe off the rest once I get uh, this part in here. So we're going to apply a little bit more. I am a you guys let me know in the comment if I'm supposed to be applying uh, a nice generous amount or if it should be a little bit less than this. Uh, I've Even with Teflon tape, I was always convinced that we, you know, you want to get a few, few, uh, uh, you want to wrap it around a few times to get that right. So uh, I could have been wrong. So you guys let me know in the comments. I'm sure you guys know more than me, but I'm going to go ahead and get this on here and we're going to tighten all this up and clean it up so that way <laughs> it's not uh, it's not like that in the car. You're going to be wondering where are you going to be putting the catch can and what hose do you attach to it? Good question. So originally, you know, uh, I thought maybe it was something here and um, that wouldn't actually be accurate, although uh, you wouldn't be necessarily wrong in thinking that. But where we are going to be going is going to be over here. So we know the PCV valve is right here. Now that we know that, we also know that there should be something that circulates from here into back into the intake, which there is. It's going to be this line right here. So you have this right here, this uh, rigid uh, cover here for a hose or whatever. And then you have one in between that. And that's the one we're going to be getting to. So PCV and right underneath here, there's going to be a line. So that's the line that we're actually going to try to get to attach to the uh, actual catch can. Now I'm just hoping that the diameter of this hose is the same that goes into the catch can. Now, like a lot of hoses do, they have a clamp here that you're going to have to get to. I'm going to use this small uh, vice grip to see if I can. Is that what it is? Vice grip? Can't remember. I'm going to try to do it without having to remove any of this stuff. That would be ideal, but we'll see what happens. Now, this might be a little bit easier for you if you don't have the strut bar. If you do have it. I might have to mess with it a little bit before it comes out. There it is. A little bit of a little bit of force. Now you got to figure out. Okay. Well, now that we got all that figured out, where it's going to go and what's going to connect to it, where we're going to hang it. Well, there is a bracket right here. And I think I'm going to use that to drill the holes for it. And once you figure out that that is the bracket you're going to use, you're going to go ahead and remove it, which is two 10 millimeter bolts. Once removed, we're going to go ahead and get into drilling the holes. 
you're going to want to go ahead and pick out which side you're going to make the holes for the mounting to. Uh, in this case, we made it on the left side of the bracket so that way everything can fit easily. And this is probably the only option that you're going to have. Once you figure that out, you're going to go ahead and start drilling. And of course, as always, an automatic center punch to help drill those holes is always a recommended tool. The screws I used are 8 32nd screws, so we had to make holes, of course, big enough to get those through. And when it comes to drilling, please don't do as I'm doing here because you can definitely hurt yourself. Make sure to use proper uh, clamping equipment to help get the drill to properly drill through. As I mentioned, you do have your drain hole down here. Now, when it's in the car, you could just undo this and, you know, you could drain it. The problem with that is, depending where it's in, in the car, that might be a pain to do. So what you do instead is you pick up a drain kit. This is from Mishimoto. Uh, looks like they provide you with a decent amount of hose. So you got a pretty decent amount of hose. I wonder if it fits this. Sure does. So it's gonna be the same size for there too. So it's very possible that we're gonna be able to use this for what I'm gonna need it for. And then of course, you got this here. Now these fittings right here, they're definitely 100% uh, aluminum or some kind of alloy or steel. These are plastic for the drain, which is kind of unfortunate because I can definitely see this getting brittle and broken. But you're gonna fit that there. You're gonna attach part of this hose to this and then the other end here and then this will be your release so you can easily drain it out this is kind of an interesting setup i can see why you would do that but i just don't know why you don't make this kind of fitting and this uh, release tab being right in where you would have the actual hole for it uh, i can understand if it gets too close you know you might not be able to adjust it but if you just have it like this where you know maybe it's sitting a little further away from the canister it should be fine so it is interesting that that's the way they went but regardless we've got to do the same thing on the bottom here that we did with these we got to put some sealant on there and uh let's see here what size is this way bigger ah just right what is that an eight millimeter uh threads look pretty good they don't look dirty at all um, there was barely any kind of sealer in that um, let's go ahead and add a little bit to this. Once again, I'm sure I'm overdoing it, but I don't know. I always feel like if I don't do enough, it's almost certainly going to leak. Now I am using a, an adjustable wrench here. Obviously you can do whatever you want. Um, it was just easier for those, for the other, for these fittings to do it this way. What I'm thinking is, not too much of a distance between these two. And then uh, if I can reach that to open that up, we'll want probably something like that, where I can easily, down means open, up means closed, I'm assuming. So I'm thinking not too far distance with, with uh, where the hose is gonna be for here. And then from here down towards the bottom, is where the rest of it will go, so that way I can easily drain it. And then uh, obviously, Mishimoto has provided quite a bit for the length. And I mean, when I say quite a bit, I mean there's quite a bit. So if we want to get just real easy, I would say. So I'm thinking potentially there. It's actually on there pretty good. I don't even think you're gonna need clamps on. I mean, it's always good to have them and they are provided, but it's on the, like, I, I don't think I can get this off right now without damaging something and it is plastic, so. So this one goes up to here. So we'd probably be right around here. hang it's not too bad 
This one does feel like it would need a clamp definitely for here. So I'm definitely gonna utilize that. And of course, from here, it's everything reverse. You want to put the bracket back on. You see the two 10 millimeter bolts to secure it back on there. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and bring over your catch can and connect that to it. Now, as you can see, my bracket for the catch can is already on the car bracket. So that way it, I didn't have to try to figure out how to tighten those bolts. Instead, I could just attach the catch can to its bracket, which is a lot easier instead of the other way around. And after doing this myself, I realized that I should have attached the hoses onto the catch can before attaching it to its bracket because with the struggle to get the hoses onto the catch can, onto the fittings, because you have to actually give it some force to get it fully fitted on there, it did, uh, it did cause the bracket for the catch can to bend a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but if you don't want that to happen to you, I do recommend putting the hoses onto the catch can before you put the catch can to its bracket. And that's really it for this video. I mean, it's not insanely hard. It's hard when you're doing it for the first time and you've probably never done it before or you've never done it on this car you know it, it takes a moment to figure everything out but otherwise it's, it's not insanely hard or anything like that really the most thing that you're going to do is taking off that bracket and drilling those holes as for the catch can, I'll definitely leave a link to maybe a universal one down in the description. And then of course, if I find the Mission Moto one <clears throat> on the link or on the website that I found it on, I'll link that below as well. You don't have to go with the Mission Moto. You can really go with any one of them. Doesn't really matter as long as it does what it needs to do. I do hope that this video did help you guys out. Uh, as I mentioned, I am going to do updates of anything that I do on my car, so make sure to be subscribed to the channel so you can see that coming up. Uh, I am going to be doing actually a more recent video here coming up soon, talking about the brakes and brake pads because there is somebody in the comments that wants to see how the pads actually sit on the rotors for the big, 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 big brake kit. And also as well, I'm changing up what oil I'm using with the Honda, so that's also going to be in that video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But otherwise, if you did enjoy the video, hit that like button. I mean, you don't have to, but you know, if you want to, I'd appreciate it. And that's it. And I'll see you in the next one. Will I see you? You're going to see me. I'm, I don't know if I'm actually going to be seeing you. Almost certainly I'm not going to be seeing you.